To quickly bring this back to rank, Charlie, earlier I said I would be willing to rank this above Thunderball, and you said under your belief you could not let that happen. I just want to very quickly make a case for it, please. That's though not we have cross dressing bro- Blofeld, as I brought up, we have yeah. Mr. Wit and Mr. Kid, arguably the funniest combo of villains we've had. Actually, the only comedy they're actually villains probably we've you know had. we were doing doing a list of assassins, right? Like they are the most effective assassins to date. Yeah, totally. And, and yeah. they are the most fleshed out characters. They have this weird relationship. It, yeah, they're fun to watch. And yet, like, <laughs> yeah. oh, and by the way, when they said he was bitten by the bug originally, they there's a deleted scene where instead of putting the scorpion in his back, he opens up. He says he's like. Like, okay, look in his mouth. And he goes like, ah. So the dentist is looking in his mouth and he's going, ah. And then Mr. Went grabs the scorpion and shoves it in his mouth. And that's how he <laughs> dies. There's another deleted scene with Shady Tree. And you actually see how they... Sh- kill him they they actually in charlie you kept bringing up the joker they shoot a gun with like a joke <laughs> bang thing like oh the joker would and then they shoot shady tree <laughs> in the back of the head with the same gun uh in the deleted scene so we actually see how he got killed but there there's actually a couple of deleted scenes in this film sammy davis jr actually appeared in this movie wow uh, they ain't never gonna get a cake big enough to put him on top of <laughs> Was he just a big Bond fan and was just like, I want to be in these movies? They put him, yeah, they put him in the movie and then they he had a deleted scene and then they cut it. Uh, but there, that's, that's kind of how this stuff always scenes. goes. It's like something becomes big, right? Ed Sheeran and then, and and then suddenly everybody yes. wants to be... Yeah, Ed Sheeran's a perfect example. Suddenly yeah. everybody wants a cameo. Once something becomes big... You open the door to everybody wants a piece of it. And then eventually you have Sammy Davis Jr. in your movie that 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 like I actually did watch that deleted scene and I see why they deleted it because it's awful. It's just like pointless. <laughs> it doesn't really add anything. To it doesn't movie. add anything other than just like Sammy Davis Jr. is in this movie. I can see yeah. why you got rid of this because all it is is like, well, my cousin's uncle's niece wanted to be in this because they knew it was going to be a big deal. Back when we were making the fucking thing, nobody gave a shit. Like when we were making Dr. No, nobody knew who we are. We were flying below the radar, but now sure. everybody wants a piece of us and that slowly brings your shit down and, and the, the self-awareness rises, right? And that's the fate of any franchise. Go watch Star Wars. And to Patterson's point last week, it's like Star Wars is chock full of mistakes. You may love when that music kicks in and it brings you right back to your childhood, but this movie takes it to such a degree. This movie's like watching what Solo probably was meant to be. Like the the original Solo movie directed by those guys that are comedians was probably mm. going to be don't take this seriously and just have fun. And then the the you know, the the powers that be at Disney were like, "No, no, 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 no. You need to take this all like super seriously, super seriously." And then they brought in Ron Howard to like make it dark, really dark and like serious. This movie is like, we just don't give a f- other than we just want to please an audience. And I think it absolutely achieves what it sets out to do. But that doesn't mean that it's better than Goldfinger or From Russia With Love or Dr. No or even Thunderball or even Secret Service. I think it sits perfectly at that sixth spot just above you only live twice. And I think you can make the argument like as we go on and this, I don't think this counts as me referencing other films, but like I bet we'll probably rank this above other movies on that basis. Yeah. Yeah. I I mean, we talked about this in the last episode, but like I rank things based on whether or not they could have avoided mistakes. And in this case, it was campy enough that you can't really call them mistakes. Yeah. They were just around and when that's the context, like it's okay to have dumb shit in it. And I so, love that. I, I I love that. Just to build off of your point, Patterson, to go mm-hmm. back to mine. That's that's what makes me love this film so much that they just did not give a shit. again. Like I said, the last film, it was good to have an emotional bond and have that break from you know doesn't give a about woman, doesn't want to marry, etc. To just fun bond, fun Blofeld, etc. It's, it's it's a good break. It, again, it's a breath of fresh air. I think to me. your point, this movie makes a point about ha- like today we have the you know the superhero franchise genre, right? Like, and I always bring this mm-hmm. up because that's a it's a really good parallel because of totally you know it's the that is what's in right now. Whether it's you're specifically talking about the Marvel movies or just all of them in general, mm-hmm. but. 
you know, those movies keep going on and going on and people, you know, at, at some point a franchise or an idea or whatever is in vogue begins to lose its luster and it either has to do two things. It either has to transcend what it's doing, which you get with films like The Dark Knight, where, yes, that's even before the Marvel films, but still that movie was trying to do something a little more adult with the franchise. And you see that with like films like Logan or some elements in some of the Avengers movies. Or you go the other way, which this movie does, like Deadpool, where it's a comedy where you're making a where everything is almost a farce. You're making jokes yeah. about things. You're making parodies. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of interesting really in, the, in this yeah. element because mm -hmm. Honor Matches and Secret Service definitely. And I still think even though you, you guys disagree that, yeah, it fails in many ways, in some ways, I still think that movie, well, we don't have to go back. But what I'm saying is that that's what it's doing. It's trying to transcend just same old thing. Bond comes in, he saves the day, he gets the girl, mm -hmm. he, he stops the bad guy without any emotional relevance. Like he's still a superhero throughout. It deserves the, respect. The character. Yes. We're on a boat at the end again. And then, but then <laughs> yeah. this movie comes along and it's like Charlie keeps saying, like, F it. You know, like we're just going to have fun. Yeah. It doesn't deserve respect, but it wasn't asking for it. Exactly. It yeah, doesn't give just, a we're mm -hmm. just doing silly shit and, you know, it's going to be yeah, fun exactly. and we're going to have fucking gorillas and, you know, blow up your pants, kid. Yeah. And car yeah. flippy thing. To recite our order, it is Goldfinger. Ugh. Don't die on me. <laughs> As I throw up in He was mouth. bitten by the bug. <laughs> like, <I> was <laughs> bitten by the bug. Bitten by the bug. <laughs> Charlie, you take it away. <laughs> okay. Goldfinger from Russia, Russia with love. With love. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. No. Dr. No. Honor Majesty's Secret oh. Service. Thunderball. Get Diamonds are forever. Oh, forever. You only live twice. Live twice. I think that list is is perfect again i still think we have a, a a solid rock hard diamond uh list going on here yes mm -hmm. and um, yes. and we are at number uh, 007 this is episode 007 if knowing what to expect with this movie i could see myself wanting to rewatch oh. this one rather than rewatch you only live twice especially knowing bond <laughs> literally has a boner joke in this movie unless <laughs> yeah. um, like what you've caught me with more than my hands up like you've got me with more than my hands. Unless job. it's something else, it, it's got to be a boner joke, right? Yeah, very important moment in film history: James Bond making a boner joke. I'm afraid you've caught me with more than my hands up. 